one. Good morning, everybody. I need my... It's not going to sound good coming on the microphone. I have a um, bowl of peanuts up here. Does anyone remember Lone Star when you used to get... That was so yum, wasn't it? All right, before I start, we are going to just show you a couple of videos about World Prayer Assembly. The reason why it's come now after... Actually, before that, we have Love Langford this week. We didn't have that on the announcements, but we have Love Langford this Tuesday, the last one for the term. So please come down, eat a meal, join our community, come volunteer, however that looks for you, but we're coming around the table with our community just before the end of term, which will be the last one on Tuesday. So 5 till 6.30 p.m. here on Tuesday. Everybody is welcome. This is pretty much called dinner at our place. You don't have to be in any certain situation to come and eat a meal. We're just coming around the table and eating together. This, if you don't know, this is all set up with tables and, f <coughs> tables and flowers and food and all sorts of stuff like that and all yummy stuff. What are we having this week? Mac and cheese. Who doesn't love mac and cheese? All right, so anyway, love lang for dinner. Okay, now, after that, World Prayer Assembly. We're going to show a video, um, a couple of videos. One, what World Prayer Assembly is and how Perth is hosting for the whole world to come to Perth. That's pretty huge. And I think we can actually miss it because so, we can be so caught up in either what we're doing in our lives, what we're doing in our churches, and we miss that we're all coming together to pray. So when you're watching this, actually think about how you can get involved if it's not volunteering coming in the evenings. Um, it's free in the evenings, Novi, free in the evenings. So come in the evenings. If you do volunteer and you want to go for the daytimes, there's also a discount. So think about that as well. So I'll say a little bit more once we watch the videos. We've learned to harness the power of the atom, but very few of us have learned how to fully develop the power of prayer. We have not yet learned that a man is more powerful on his knees than behind the most powerful weapons we have ever developed. We've not learned that a nation is more powerful when it unites in earnest prayer to God. We have not discovered that the answer to our problems can be through contact with God. Pray without ceasing. Paul didn't write this to a person, he wrote this to a church. And what is possible if a church decides to pray without ceasing? He's asking us to pray because prayer actually works. Ephesians 3.20 says, He is able to do more than we can ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. We believe that there is an assignment here in this great land. There's a prophetic purpose and a gathering of prayer. Four days in October, October 3rd through the 6th, and I don't believe this is just for Perth. Perth is hosting, but this is actually a summons across Australia, New Zealand, and all of Oceania, there is a moment to raise a sound to heaven, a voice of agreement and intercession for breakthrough and revival in all these lands. At the children's section of the World Prayer Assembly, we want to ignite a passion in our younger generation. We're hosting a three-day kids festival at the World Prayer Assembly, where we want children to connect with the Father's heart, the Father's love for them, and the Father's love for the whole world. We also want to equip children with a missional mindset that they can go and take this love that they receive from the Father into the world around them. The Kits three-day festival will be running Wednesday, Thursday and Friday from 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. with the check-in at 9.30 a.m. So come along to the World Prayer Assembly from the 3rd to the 6th of October and join us as one family, one tribe and one generation at the World Prayer Assembly right here in Perth at the Perth Convention Centre. How cool does that sound? Join us at the World Prayer Assembly. 
Okay, so if you want to be involved in volunteering at the kids, so our church is involved, Novi and Tristan, and I think Josh have been going to all the meetings. If you want to be involved in the kids program, please come and see me for those days, third to the sixth, or it could be the, did he say third to the sixth? Yeah. Um, to volunteer in the day. Also, if you have youth, so there's been a donation going towards the costing of youth. So youth's amount to be able to go to those programs has halved, has halved. So you see me again if you have youth that you want to go to this. In the evenings, because I know some of us work and can't make it in the days, in the evenings it is free. So Elton doesn't know, but he'll be driving the bus. So <laughs> if we all want to go up together... And the bus seats 11 or 12, if we want to go up together and you go, I don't know really how to get there or, you know, you just want to go with people, let us know. We'll be taking a bus every night up there. So you'll be able to join with us and, yeah, let's pray together because it, I mean, prayer changes things, doesn't it? And we say we're people of prayer. So let's be people of prayer and let's come together and pray, not just with our church, but with all of those people that are coming from everywhere. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So if you want more information, please um, come and speak to me. If you know Novi, Novi's got her hand up um, and you, and you want to go and speak to her about it, go and speak to her about it. If you do not have a working with children's, we can help you get that. So if you do want to really help in the kids program and you need a working with children's, please come and see me and we'll sort out the forms for you. Okay. Have I missed anything with World Prayer Assembly? We're good. All right. The bus. It's exciting in the bus. Okay. New season. <laughs> New season. Who loves spring? Yes. I mean, apart from the hay fever that's going around. Yeah, Pete? <laughs> And our household as well. I think the sneezing just goes on and on and on and on and on. It doesn't end. But the flowers start to come out. And we have a tree at the front of our house. What's it called? Mop tree. And it starts to grow beautifully in spring. And then it just has all of these leaves. And it's a full tree that you want to sit under. And the winter comes and everything's gone. And spring comes and all the flowers, all the leaves are starting to leave. And we have these plum trees that have been leafing or growing leaves. <laughs> every every um, year and now one of them is flowering so that is very exciting and I was thinking about the seasons and and where we're standing right now and it's easy to say that it's a new season because it is but it's the same as every season every season comes around every year right four seasons that come around every year depending you know, it could be more seasons if you're looking at a different anyway doesn't won't get into that Four seasons that happen every um, year. They look different each time they come around. They start different each time they come around, but they're still consistent in coming around. So this is much as this is a new season, God has already been doing this season and shaping this and giving direction to where he's headed, the, heading this church in C3 Langford already. So that's already been happening. So I'm not standing up here going, this is a new season. However... I am standing up here to bring what God has laid on us for the next for C3 Langford. So you will be getting a little bit of a nutshell download, right, today. You will be getting a bit of that today, probably a lot of that today. And then we'll be scaling it back and then journeying this for the rest of the year. But this is sort of giving you who we are, what we feel God is saying in a nutshell, we believe that, and I'm probably going right off my notes, but we believe that God will create that nut on the inside with us together. But he's downloading the nutshell. Right? So he's been doing this at the table for the whole year. He's been doing the season for the whole year. Right? So we're here where we are and we think, oh, it's a new, but when we look back, at each, each month, each from the beginning of the year, he's already been downloading this to us, already. Ephesians 1.22, I want to say this in both versions, NLT and Message. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. In the Message it says, he is in charge of it all, has the final word on everything. At the centre of all of this, Christ rules the church. So we don't have to worry that what is going to happen next, 
what is God going to do? Because he's already been in charge of it. He's already in charge of it. So I'm not standing up here going, oh, okay, so this is now Lisa and Elton. Yes and no, because God was already in charge of it. And he's been doing it already. It's all under his authority. It's all his church. So we're not going to get caught up in like what we said a little while ago through Gabby's dream, in the details, get caught up in that and miss the delight in Jesus while we're walking this path because we as people need to know, where's this going? What's the details? What's next? What's happening? So that's not how God is downloading this to us. He's already been doing it. He's already in charge of it. So I just want to pray for this word. I just thank you, Father, for this word. I thank you, God, that this word goes out. This word encounters people. It touches people. It transforms people because it's your word, Father. And I pray that any different motive or myself gets out the way as I deliver this, and it's all you, Jesus. I thank you for you just encountering people's hearts, Father. In your name, amen. Okay, so I feel like the... God's downloading the nutshell. And it's a bit like when Neil was talking about the chrysalis. Is that how I say that right? Yeah. Chrysalis. So that's a hard uh, shell, if we say, around the caterpillar while, it, while, while it's forming to become this beautiful butterfly. Right? And so I feel that this is like that. This is a nutshell that God is forming. Right? So you know when there's a hole in a nut shell, there's a hole in the shell. The nut can't form. We enjoy the nut. Out of, we don't enjoy the nutshell. We enjoy the nut. And when it's got no holes in it, inside the nut, it can actually, the nut can grow. And we enjoy this nut. I know I'm talking about nuts, right? <laughs> but it can, actually, it can actually grow. It gets all the nutrients it needs inside this nutshell. And then we enjoy the nut, right? So we feel that God is creating this nutshell which is him speaking, him making, and that we together are forming this nut on the inside, right? And Elton spoke about the Father's heart. And so in, in the nutshell, go back, and in the chrysalis, God forms us, right? And if you haven't been there yet, where God will develop you, put you in secret place, all that sort of stuff, it will happen. Some of us are there now. Some of us have been there, right? But that's a developing because we all want to get out and we want to do the work and we all want to go, but that's the developing inside this nut, inside this chrysalis to actually form what God's forming inside of us. And Elton spoke last week about the father's heart and the father's heart for his children and how he's ready to embrace us and come back and come to him at any time. So this was already forming through this. I didn't speak to Neil about the nutshell, but this was already forming. Family is what has been forming. And we can say we're family, but being family and doing family is very different to saying we're family. So when you, Because when you put them both together, that's what the family is. So since, since we knew about this next, I'm going to be going to my notes a bit just because I don't want to miss what God's been downloading in this time and just give a message for the sake of giving a message here on a Sunday morning. But really have spent a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time in that space with God, just what is it that you want to say? And you think it has to be profound because, like, look at where we've come from <laughs> and who we've come from. You think it has to be profound. What are you going to say, God? And he gives this picture in a nutshell, right? And he says, hang on, let me go where I'm, where I'm actually at. I missed a whole bunch, but it's okay. We don't usually go there. <laughs> he says this. Model the church as you see your family. So simple. Such a simple statement. Model the church as you see your family. But that simple statement can be hard. I don't know how many people feel I'm the black sheep of the family. We all heard Elton's very sad story of forging a certificate so he can be accepted by his dad and part of the family. We all heard that he found it hard to tell his kids that he loved them because he didn't get told that. So family looks different, right? Family looks different. And some of you may be able to relate to Elton's story. 
Maybe some of you don't know what it's like to be a part of the family, so you don't know how to act in a family. Maybe some of you have been so hurt by your family that the meaning of family is fractured. Maybe some of you have been so hurt by your church family, now you don't know how to trust people. Or maybe some of you are so secure in your earthly families that you think, I don't need to dive into my spiritual family or know them. All right, so there's different ways of looking at family. So this passage is the nutshell for the nutshell, right? Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. So we were all strangers. Now he's joined us together as one family. We are, we, because it talks about that in the, in the beginning through sin and the first three chapters through sin and what's happened through sin. But after that, it says he, if we accept him, we're adopted into his family. We're all brothers and sisters in his family. And that's easy to say and do, but it's also easy to distance. It's also easy to cut off. It's also easy to not be engaged. It's also easy not to trust, so then you remove yourself and you take yourself out, or to keep people at arm's length. So you just don't know too much about me, but we'll pretend we're family. I'll be nice to you. I'll be a little bit vulnerable to you about this much to you, so you feel that we're connected, but family isn't this much. Family's all in. Family's family. So we'll be breaking down um, Ephesians throughout the rest of this year because we're building what God is actually saying and how we're going to form this nut going into the next year and beyond. But so through this year, through the rest of this year, we'll be breaking that down. But right now, in the next little while, we're going to be breaking down Ephesians chapter 2. And Ephesians chapter 2 is significant for a few reasons. So the first three verses, like I said, through sin and everything that happens through sin. So he's talking about the Gentiles and the Jews coming together and being one family. No division anymore because we're one in Jesus Christ, right? So then the rest of it from verse four, it is broken down to God for us, God in us, God through us, God among us. And that's where the picture, beautiful picture, you see all the flowers going through God and amazing picture. Thank you, Novi. So Also, the reason why it's so significant, Ephesians 2, and I'm not so clever to remember 17, 18 years ago when Elton was saved and what God gave him. Um, Elton, and he'll hopefully share this more for people who don't know, was someone who physically felt the presence of God when he was saved. An amazing story, but what downloaded to Elton was Ephesians 2, 1 to 5, right? Then what downloads to me is Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. So we, so you know that blow head emoji? When this happens and this comes to me, it's like, okay, well, we started how long ago with Ephesians 2 at the beginning? Then we come here and see in your pastor is Ephesians 2 at the end, where it's now God among us. And now it's time to build. And we're ready to build. It was such a significant moment just to go, God, you've been in this from back then. We think it was only in this, oh, I saw what you were doing a few years ago, God. I saw what you were doing five years ago, God. I saw what you were doing last year, God. But no, God's been doing this for so long, from before we were even saved. And just to know that God has been in this when we've been trying to run or however that looks, <laughs> trying to run. I'm not trying to run at the beginning, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to run now. At the beginning, it was tough. We all know the journey that's tough. Just because you raise your hand at a salvation call does not mean that everything is good and you'll never get it wrong. Because I can tell you so many times I have got it wrong. And I can probably not tell you so many times I'm going to get it wrong. Because that'll happen. Anyway, so. (laughs) All right. The book of Ephesians. So we're going to go through that. God's building his spiritual family. It's not to do with where they're from. It's not to do with the garments they were wearing like it is in the Old Testament. This is now veils torn. Division is gone. We are one family. That's the intention. So the division caused can literally be caused by us but the intention is for us to be one family in Jesus Christ so one one the chapter one three Paul summarizes it this way for Ephesians for the okay 
Okay, in Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. In this verse, we see the wealth of their inheritance, which they were missing. Right? He was trying to tell them, this is what you have. Every spiritual blessing. You have all you need to live through Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying to us. You have all, that's what he was saying to them, that's what he's saying to us. You have all you need to live in Jesus Christ. Verse 20, it says, Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. So he used his picked apostles and prophets to download, help write the New Testament to set our foundation. This foundation, the cornerstone of that foundation, is Jesus Christ. Christ. That's the cornerstone of that foundation. So I want to put this picture up on the screen of the cornerstone. So the cornerstone, I've got one that says cornerstone, just to have a look at the bricks and how they're all different shapes, all different sizes, and it makes this wall. But the cornerstone is the biggest stone. The cornerstone, when the buildings were built in, in stone and bricks, was where the stone comes in, it lays the foundation for the foundation. So what is our foundation? What is our foundation built on? So we can have our truths that we were born into. Some of us were born into these truths. But the cornerstone is Jesus Christ. That's the foundation of the foundation. That sets the direction. That sets the shape. That sets, that sets where it's going. All of that. And the stones that will get to the living stones, that's us building this wall, building this temple so back in the day, God would, then, God would reside in buildings. Now the temple is us. The temple is not these four walls. The temple is us. We're the living stones that are building this wall. Right? So the cornerstone, everything is based on this large, it's the largest stone. The foundation of the foundation is built with this cornerstone. So we'll keep the picture up there for a second. So verse 21, we are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. In the message translation, it says, now he's using you, fitting you in, brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We can't build this healthy nut without the cornerstone. We can't all come together and say, we can all say, I'll close the holes and I'll close the gaps and I'll do this for you and I'll do that for you and I'll do this. It's in our own strength. We can't do it. Without Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, who's the foundation on our foundation, we cannot have a closed nutshell that we're going to create a healthy nut on the inside, which is all of us building the temple, building the temple wall. So 1 Peter, 5, 1 Peter 2, 5 says, we are living stones, which means action. Right? So like living stones, we are built into a spiritual house so to be a holy priesthood. So this requires all of us to not just know of the cornerstone, not just know his word, not just read he's the cornerstone and have that as knowledge in our head, but to actually action on it, to actually work on it, to work on it together, that he is the cornerstone and we are, he's giving us direction, he's giving us shape, he's building us to how we're supposed to do this, what we're supposed to do, how we're going to grow. So my question to you is how are you reaching out that people are being saved to join this wall? That added stones are coming onto this wall, added bricks are coming onto this wall. What part do you play in that? in going out and evangelizing and reaching? And then how do we actually get strong stones that don't just pop out? That's through training, that's through discipleship, that's through walking along one, one, alongside one another. Because each brick looks different, right? Each brick might have a little bit of a pointy thing coming out of it, and so you feel a little bit like you're rubbing up alongside this funny brick. And so then you remove yourself, there's a hole. Gravel can fill a hole, right? Can in some way, but you're missing. So when we're adding to this, how do we strengthen each other? How do we disciple each other? How do we walk alongside each other when we're growing this wall and we're adding living stones to this wall? How do we do that? What's your part to actually play in that? Model the church as you see your family, as we see our family. So how do we see our family? So I'm going to go through some practical things 
through this message of how we see our family and some of how we see our immediate family. This is, so if God's given me this, I want to give you how we see our family. Each one is valued as equally as each other. Each plays a different role because each were created uniquely. Each purpose is unique. We, we from when they were born, Taylor's an adult now, so it's a bit different, but when, from when they were born, we went into each room and we prayed with our children every night. I'm sure lots of you do that. We pray with our children every night, sat on their bed speaking to them with different things they were going through. We gave each room just as much value. They do not exist to please us as parents. We are to fan into flame the gifts God gave us, God gave them. We conversate about good times and bad times. We pray together. We can sometimes rub each other up the wrong way, say the wrong thing the wrong way, but we always come back together and sort it out. We don't gossip about each other, speak negative about each other, put each other down. We love one another. A family shares emotional bonds, common values, goals, and responsibilities. Family members contribute significantly to the well-being of each other. We as parents don't have to make them feel like they belong in our family. Even if we've had an argument, they don't go away and go, I wonder if I... They might want to feel that. <laughs> but I wonder if I belong in this family. They don't have to question that. They know they belong in this family. We don't have to make them feel loved even to know they belong in this family because they know they belong in this family. Whether good times or bad times, ugly times, rub each other the wrong way, whatever those times look like, they know they belong in our family. Whether we want to acknowledge the enemy in all of this or not, because some of us go, you know what, God already has the victory and we know it, but the enemy comes against unity and the enemy comes against family. It is a no wonder why churches explode and implode because they're family. It's family. We're joined together. We're joined together with the wider body of Christ. We're also joined together where we're planted to belong as a family. To not question if we belong because someone's rubbed you up the wrong way or offended you. It's because we're family and we come together and we go, this is where I'm planted. Let's grow together. So when Pastor Clint spoke about last year, he was bringing in what's in you and let's grow that. I actually believe that that was a seed for now. So that was a seed. So it's not like we're coming in and going, oh, we're going to just do everything differently. That's not it because this is God's church. So he knew what he's been doing. He knew how he's been orchestrating it. So when Pastor Clint does this over here, he's getting ready for this over here. So what's in you uniquely that we fan into flame when we go, that's how we're going to grow? We have something special as family together. And I believe that this church is so generous. Like, it's not just your finances, it's your time. It's like, look at the size of this church and we can give to 150 people in families giving trees and gifts and we feed over 100 people each fortnight food and, and, and the church funds it. We don't get grants for any of this stuff. We do it. You do it. This is C3 Langford. We are impacting in the community. People know when to, where to come. We wanted to be that hub. We are that hub. God has orchestrated all of this in C3 Langford, and we are family. The reason why we have Hope Sunday instead of Compassion Sunday next week, let me break this down a little bit. So Compassion Sunday was happening at the beginning of the year, spoke to Pastor Kerry, yep, he's in. What was happening at the beginning of the year was, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. I was still going through a transition of where, where is God headed me, heading me? Personally, us as a family, what are we doing? But it was, it was just a continuation of what we've been doing, right? So Pastor Kerry's a great, great friend of the house. Um, but I woke up last Monday morning. God loves to wake me up at really odd hours of the night. I don't know why. I'd like to have long sleeves. But anyway, it happens all through the night. And he woke me up and it just... It was like, we have an international ministry in our church, in our church family, right? We've listened to Michael and Christine speak about House of Hope. We've gone over to House of Hope. We've, we've listened to all of this. But, and if you've gone to the quiz nights, you've been able to have opportunity to see the different places, that, the different ways that you can partner and sponsor and all that sort of stuff. But we're bringing in, and as much as we love compassion, it's not saying we're going to throw everything out. That's, that's not it. 
But I felt just God just say, let's grow your family, right? <laughs> Kerry was very understanding, very understanding. And he's all for this house, all for us. So he has agreed in the future to come and speak as him because he's a dear friend of this house, but he understood why to not have compassion in. This is the reason why it's turned to Hope Sunday. So uh, Michael and Christine will set up a booth, we'll explain all the ways you can partner, all the ways you can sponsor, getting our kids' church involved in that, gold coin donations. They already do sponsor a Compassion Kid, I think, from the last time, but that just does it out of her own money. Um, but it's really going, okay, how do we do this as a church? How do we bring in gold coin donations for the kids? How do we teach them that they're giving into something like this? How do we grow what's going on, the ministry that's going on, international ministry that's going on in our house? And so that is the reason why we now have Hope Sunday over Compassion Sunday. So it wasn't just a cut. It was definitely explaining everything. It was definitely God speaking. And so this is the reason why we have Hope Sunday for next Sunday. So that is the nut shell forming. And I actually wanted to get walnuts because walnut is a really hard shell and inside the nut is so intricately made, right? Let's be like a brain. So I wanted to get a walnut, but when Elton went to the shops and they only had peanuts, it's like, yeah, okay, they'll do because there's still, you know, the shell. But what I actually love about peanuts is they come in twos. They don't come singly. They come in a pair. If there's a hole in this, I don't know if anyone's had a really moldy peanut, does not taste nice, right? So this comes in twos, these grow together. When you see a one peanut, that's really odd, hey? It's really odd looking because it wasn't meant to, it wasn't designed to be by itself. It was designed to be as a pair. So when I came back, when we came back from Italy, we saw this picture of these, I saw this picture of these cobblestones that we were, Deanna fell bike riding on. They're all uneven, but they're all joined together. So the, the, what we're seeing, do we still have, I don't know if we still have that picture, I'm looking at that picture, but the cornerstone and the temple that's growing, the wall that's growing with all of us living stones on it, the discipleship program I see is this cobblestone path that we're adding to, that we're walking along. And when you lift yourself up from it, again, there's a hole. So we're just sort of like adding on and we're going through this discipleship together. We're going through this strengthening together. How do you see us? Now this, I'm going to be honest here about how I feel God has called Elton and myself here at the church. If you have issues with this, come and speak to me later. All right. (laughs) God appointed us as pastors of this church, not the building, to be the shepherd, but the under-shepherd to Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 2 2 to 3. Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. Not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. We are not coming in as your mothers and fathers. Right? It was appropriate for Pastor Clinton and Leah. Reason being is because some of us were actually saved under their leadership and they grew us up. We were literally like 18 years old, so it was like an adult growing up. That was an adult age, right? And they did that with some people in this church. For us to assume that position, it's unwarranted. We pray that it happens in our ministry, but that still would not make us the mothers and the fathers of this church. It could make us spiritual mothers and fathers to people who are saved under our ministry, but we are not coming in. We're not coming in as replicas of Pastor Clinton and Leah. If we were and there should be no changes, God wouldn't have moved them. But this is a God thing in where they are, a God thing in where we are. So to come in as them because, oh, we don't know what else to do, but it's been working okay, so let's just be them and replicate that, that's not what God's saying. So we're not coming in replicating the mother and the father, although we are praying that people get saved under our our, our leadership. We are, however, taking on this position. I'm going to turn this scripture with Elton and myself. Care for the flock that God has trusted, entrusted to us. Watch over it willingly, 
not grudgingly, for what we will, for what we will get out of it, but because we are eager to serve God. We will not lord it over the people assigned to our care, but lead you by, you, by our own good example. We will also willingly not cease to pray for you, guiding you and seeking wisdom through this whole time. We understand that people in their hearts, some have said, we have to call you pastors. Some said, I can't because you've come up amongst. I'm so used to not calling you pastors. We are not majoring on minor details. That is your decision. Right? Your decision of what you want to call us. We're not getting involved in those details because there's so much that God's doing in this house. And to major on titles, we're not going to be a part of that. So that can be between you and God and to discuss that between you and God. Okay. A couple of things which is going to look like a little bit into the future. We do no longer, we do no longer, we don't have David Hooper as our overseer anymore. He will still be Pastor Clinton's overseer. We now have Mel and Paul Marshall, C3 Canberra. They used to actually be Tristan and Norby's pastors, <laughs> so just really connected. So they're in Canberra and they will be our overseers. She's the senior pastor. He was a principal of a Christian school. for. They've been doing it for like 31 years or something, she said. And he's now been on staff for the last eight years. That is something we want to grow in, but this is where we're at now. So uh, our over, the head of WA and the overseers have seen them to be our fit model for them to be our overseers. The front seats. This is just really practical. I'm going to give you some answers of some questions that people have been asking. So they could seem really silly to some people, but I'm just going to get it out there. These front seats. The reason why we didn't move over there is because, again, we're not replicating that. We're not jumping into this seat, and so then whoever comes in here is the next. We are not growing that way. All right? So we stay here. Here... Pastor Paul's sitting there today. Neil sat there last week because he was on here. So it's easy access for people on the stage. We have guest pastors. We have pastors. These are not assigned seats, but they're people who are up here, people who are, like if Pete just decides, oh, I'm just going to sit there because I'm worship leading, go for it. We do, we do pray that people that are in the front seat are praying for the service, praying for us, have the people on stage praying for them. That's what we're praying for, people behind us. We, we pray all the way that well, we pray all of you are praying for the church and praying for the service and praying for all of us but that's sort of we're not majoring again on something that's so minor the reason why we got rid of the reserve signs not because we're going oh it's we're disagreeing with that that's not why we got rid of them it's because we are not coming in as replicas of Clinton and Leah so feel free to park there because we've been questions of why we're not and there, it's gone, so park there if you want to park there. We don't have reserved uh, bays. Not because any of it was wrong. It's just because we're actually going, okay, what is God saying to us? And when we're so conditioned in a certain culture in a certain way, that's what we see. So we don't see the next because we're so used to doing the old, right? Because we're not seeing that. So this is why that is not there. Changes of offices. You know, the first day... I was in here, we were doing the catering from the honouring service and I was coming in here to meet the caterer to pick up her staff and I thought, you know what, this, because this is all really quite overwhelming, it's a real, I don't know what the word is, but I stood in here and I thought, let me just spend a little time in here in prayer. And then Pete rocks up with his crew, Quinny and Cole, they were coming in to surprise and do down lights in the, in the office and take down the wall, I just happened to be here, but... <laughs> There's, so I am going into Pastor Clinton's old office. We have taken down, I haven't, they have taken down the wall in the office. So it's like a universal space. We are going to get, I'll explain that in a second, but we're going to get a table in there, a screen in there. So we can use that as different meetings, a different meeting space. And so that's really exciting. That's going on in there. Monday's off. I need to tell you this. I am taking Mondays as a Sabbath. I am not saying... <laughs> Just some boundaries here. I'm not saying that an emergency, like, would you not go and save your ox? Yes, of course. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm untouchable on those days. What I am saying, so you know what is going on 
I can't, I can't stand here and say and be this good shepherd of leading by example and saying I'll do that and not actually take out the Sabbath. We've spoken about the Sabbath before. It's a commandment, which I will pray that all of you will try and add into your life, but Monday will be that day for me. Okay, I have had lots of meetings, overseers and different people, different pastors, um, women senior pastors, just to you know be relatable, all that sort of stuff. So I've had a lot of them. I have met with some of you. I want to meet with you. I want to build a relationship with you. So if you want to have a meeting with me or us or together or however that looks, please contact me. Please don't sit back and go, well, she hasn't contacted me. And then we start that all over again. Please don't do that. Please just come and contact me. And please be patient with us. We are meeting with people. They're long meetings too at the moment and really trying to download this uh, for everybody. So please be patient with us, but please come and talk to us about meeting. Don't just wait until you go, oh, maybe they look like they're free. Just come and talk to us so we can schedule it in. It could be in a couple of weeks, but still schedule it in. Appointing positions. Unless God speaks, that's not happening. There's no real position that I can say is up for grabs. So it's not like I'm looking, going around looking when God speaks. I know that we can all hear, we all hear God's voice. And I know that sometimes we'll go, um, is this God, is this not God? But when God actually speaks, I know. The compassion, the hope, I know. I know when God actually speaks. So when God speaks, then we will act. Okay. So Elton, I want to speak a little bit about Elton. <laughs> Elton, um, he, so some of the roles that, that, because people were so used to seeing Pastor Clinton and then Lisa. And whatever they couldn't get Clint for, they came to Lisa. We don't want to set up like that. And as much as that was how we've set up in, in however many years and it was called for, and Leah was working and she, she spoke up to you about what she was going through with her family and her kids and how she get, had to give her time to that. That's not happening with us, so it's not going to be like that. There will be some roles that Elton will be taking and that you will go to Elton for. Some naturally you'll be coming to me for. We will form that as God forms that in us. I just know that's what will be happening for people to go to Elton. <laughs> Elton works... I don't know, he could work 50 hours a week, 60 hours, but he works a lot. And people think, oh, he's a photographer, that's such a crazy job. Elton, Musiani would know wherever Musiani is. Elton works hard. He could be setting up a scaff for two, 300 kids. I don't know how that looks, but I do know he comes back and his body is very sore. It's actually manual labor. It's not pressing a button. Plus he goes away. He's going away in a couple of hours for a week. But he wants to be involved. This is not me saying back off because he doesn't he wants to be involved just because you might not see him constantly like you see my face doesn't mean stay away from him he wants to be involved he wants to meet with you he wants to do that sort of stuff just understand where he's at understand the amount of hours he works understand that he has a lot going on as well but he wants to be actively involved and hopefully we could be a little bit like the melon Paul Marshall and he can end up being on staff. Who even, who knows what God's plan is, but that's a, that's a, that's a aim, that's a hope, right? Elton's worked with kids for 17 years. Elton loves kids. If you see him with kids, he's amazing with kids. So what we have spoke about doing is Elton will go into kids once a month. A couple of reasons why Elton will go into kids once a month is one, I mean, kids love Elton, Elton loves kids. That's just a little practical thing. But two, it's every room. Like I said, praying into every room. Every room is just as important as the next room. So Elton will be going in there, teaching, uh, I don't know, Bible stories, doing devotions, speaking with the kids. I've spoken with Jess. We struggle with volunteers in kids' church. People look at kids' church like it's a babysitting thing and I'm not seen or I'm, I'm not in the auditorium or however that looks of what we see. We just don't see it. It's not in our head because we don't see it unless we've got kids. Then we realise, oh, there's something actually um, going on in the kids' church. But we don't see it if we don't see it, right? We don't see it if, if we just don't see something if we don't see it. That's not profound, right? We don't see it if we don't see it. So he'll be going in there because it's knowing Pastor Elton just sees as much in me and he's invested as much in me as they are on a Sunday morning. So Elton will be going in there once a month. 
uh, once a month. Yeah, he'll be going in there <laughs> once a month. We have worship practice back from term four on Wednesday nights. Just a clap here, go. Right. <laughs> we are combining it with prayer nights. We're also combining it with dinner. So we will have, it's going to be all the healthy stuff, like chicken chips and pizzas and stuff like that, but really quick meal together. We will join together as worship and prayer. We will worship and pray together for the first 15 minutes or something. God's still forming this. But the first 15 minutes or something in the auditorium, we will worship and we will pray together. Then the prayer lot will go into that room and we'll be praying together and the worship team will continue practicing for what they need to do for that week. All right. We will, uh, well, I think we're thinking to eat from 6.30. We haven't really sorted that, but we're thinking to eat from 6.30, have, you know, just cough, scoffing a bit of healthy food down and then coming in and worshipping, praying together. We also have, we will continue our morning prayers um, every second and fourth Wednesday morning, we will continue our Sunday morning prayers, and Shelley's also looking at doing a daytime prayer, so I'm meeting with her this week about doing a daytime prayer. We will have so many avenues for you to join and pray that there is no excuse that this church is not coming together and praying, right? <laughs> prayer is important, and it strengthens us together as the temple of God. Youth, we are starting youth. Term four, youth is back. 22nd of September, we're actually starting, but then it goes on to holidays, right? But 22nd of September, Millie is taking the youth to Oasis Church, where Jeremy is. They're actually doing a night from year four, right? So you'll be able to all go down there, and it's like starting our youth, but the end of term. And then we start our youth in term four. Yes, Millie, but Elton and I will also be here helping build youth on the Friday nights. So youth is just as important as kids, just as important as prayer, just as important as us being together. We are growing each other as a family. And hopefully we get to a point where we have holiday programs because one of Elton's biggest things for the last, I don't know how many years, he always says he doesn't understand why youth groups stop on holidays because that's where kids get up to stuff. So we're going to be having implementing holiday programs so whether that's twice in the holidays or whatever, however that looks but you know that that's in the process all right also Sunday fortnight uh, Millie will be taking the youth out into that room that will have the table and the screen she'll be taking the youth out and doing different teachings and devotions and all that sort of stuff in that room every fortnight Sunday okay we're also looking at doing a family camp at the end of next year we have Teachers Appreciation, 27th of October. If you can help on that, it's a Friday. Please come and see me. We have Murray Newman coming in November. I don't know if everyone remembers Murray. He was the guy that was on there that told Clinton to say yes, which, you know, sort of generated in all of this happening. So Murray is a dear friend of this house. He is coming here and he's coming to Mandarin. We're sort of going to look at doing some sort of prophetic workshop in between that for both churches. Jason Schroeder, the C3 Australia, from Hepburn Heights, but C3 Australia director, will be coming here in November as well, preaching to us in November. We will also be looking at doing a preaching class next year and also doing um, Emotionally Healthy Spiritual course. I'm not sure if people are familiar with that course. I've done the course, looking at becoming a table member to be able to do this course throughout lots of healing in it and just different different walking and sort of dive deep into yourself and to come out to see that Jesus is the cornerstone of our lives. All right, where can you help? Kids. You can help in kids. You can be a part, you see kids as part of the family. Youth, see youth as part of the family. Young adults. We don't have a young adults ministry. We need a young adults ministry. We were doing it last year again and when we used to be young adult leaders. That's where we were. Uh, we were doing it again last year, but now it looks different. So we need young adults. Sundays, ushers, prayer, attending, coming in and saying, you know what, Paula, I can actually intercede and lead a Sunday morning prayer and just, just means you're coming here at 9 a.m. So, so someone's already in there praying. Love Langford if you want to help. World Prayer Assembly to pray together, come together if you want to volunteer in kids. I'm just giving you some examples of where you can because lots of people go, what do you want from me? It's like, well, these are some areas. Serving one another. This is probably the biggest thing that I want us to sort of get. We haven't come in as going, we're the pastors now, what can I do for them? As in you guys do for us. 
all of my Christian existence, I have given my life to serving the house and serving our pastors. Sometimes it was at the detriment of some relationships, but that's what I did. I gave my all over. We don't all of a sudden stand in this position and go, now everybody serve us because that's what we did. We're not those people. I'm definitely not that person. But what I do see is the church seeing each other and serving each other. When you see a need, fill it. What's in your hands, do it. See each other and serve one another. That is, is the, the heart of who we are. We haven't stopped being who we are because now we're lead pastors. We haven't stopped being that, those people. And we're not asking you to be that. We're not asking you to replicate what you saw us doing in all these years, right? So it's not a rejection. I need to say that. If I say no to something or I don't need it, it's not a rejection on you. Please don't see it that way. I just, I haven't gone from being someone who does all of this stuff to all of a sudden, I can't. Okay, so, so it's not a rejection. And I love the heart of wanting to do it. It's not that. It's not that I don't, I, I love the heart of that. Please see each other and give that heart to each other. Because that's what family is. We look out for the well-being of each other. All right. It's the unseen things that make a family work. So when we're serving each other, it's the unseen things. It's not the big events. It's not all the stuff we do as a family that everybody sees. It's the underneath that happens every day. That's what makes us family. That's what forms family. And being in the tam family is tough. There's unhealed hurts what we don't know how to let go of, the trust is lost, bitterness, unforgiveness, the resentment grows when we don't even know the resentment's growing, disappointments, even distractions, because we can get so disappointed that then we go, the priority becomes, I'm going to look after me and my own, you look after you and your own, and then we're sort of this divided family because we can't get past these disappointments and hurts that have happened. We have a, a, a clean slate sort of to go, okay, what do we see as family? Now let's build that. And that's sort of what this Emotionally Healthy Spiritual course will do. It will bring us through those things that we've gone through, bring us through the hurts. Because just because we're Christian doesn't mean that we just don't get hurt. So we will, we will go through this course at different times through the year and it, it's just this, God wants to heal that. So we can go, okay, how do I get involved in this family? How can I trust again? How can I get rid of this unforgiveness or disappointments and all that sort of stuff? So, so if I can grab the, the worship team up. So God says we are family, right? Family in family. Because you might go, I don't need this. I've got my family. But we are family, whether you like it or not. We're family in family. It's like the yes in yes. And he wants to free us from those chains that we've gone through that hurt. He wants to free us from what keeps us Oh, it's such in bondage to actually just live a life as family with each other and to trust each other and to, to be good stewards of being God's temple because he dwells in us now, right? So we've got all these hurts and we've got all these disappointments or things that we thought would have but didn't. And God's going, but I want to dwell there. You're my temple. So how do we, what part do we play into growing this wall? What part do we play in strengthening the wall? That we go, you know what, we might rub each other up the wrong way, but in actual fact, we're actually fitting with each other. Right? It's really what we're doing. We're fitting with each other and we're fitting in with each other and we're rubbing that stuff off. Sh iron sharpens iron, right? So we're rubbing that stuff off and we're fitting in. And I want to show you these two... Um, two yeah. We can't fruit alone. So I have a fruit tree, well, we have, Elton really does, Elton plants them, but anyway, Elton has a fruit tree, a plum tree. They have been leafing together and growing leaves for all these years. How many? Six years. Six years growing leaves. This year, when it's ready to fruit, only one bears flowers. And the thing with plum trees, you need another variety of plum tree next to it for it actually to fruit. So this one went dry. This one fruits and can't fruit. It flowers and it can't fruit. It's such a miss of us to grow together, grow leaves together, and then when it comes just before we're ready to bear fruit, we go dry. 
we don't always just go dry, but the next person next to us, we can infect them and they can't fruit. The thing with God is, he will do whatever it takes to accomplish whatever he needs to accomplish. We get to do this. We were getting a piano yesterday. The girls want to learn piano. We've got in our studio some drums and um, uh, a guitar and, and piano. We sort of want to eventually start doing just sort of, sort of prayer and worship gatherings in there and stuff. So we got this piano and this guy said it hasn't even been played for more than an hour because he bought it for his daughter, but she doesn't want to play it, right? And I know that my nephews, for example, play some drums or keyboard. And, and this girl, he's like, where would she play it, right? He wants to play guitar. He's got these guitars sitting there, doesn't play it. And we got in the car and we were like, how fortunate is church that these guys get to be up here and display God's gifts every week? It's not a, oh, I'm on roster again. Or don't want to be on consecutively although Taylor doesn't get much of a choice because I do the roster, but <laughs> it's not that. It's the fact that we get to do this. We get to serve. We get to be in this place where we get to use our God gifts. That's what we get to do because everybody, right, everybody has imprinted in them something to, to yearn for God. Not everybody knows it, but we're all designed like that. We know it, but sometimes, like Elton said, we see the grass is greener over there because those people were nicer to me than my Christian family. Like Elton said, water here. Water here, because we're family. So that tree goes dry, and that tree can't fruit. You build together, you grow together, you live together. That's your leafing every year. Don't take yourself out because God will put somebody else in. We can get another plum tree and eventually it might flower and that one just misses out because God will accomplish whatever he needs to accomplish and we get to say yes in the yes or we dry up and we stay dry and we don't bear anything. He will accomplish what he needs to accomplish. We get to be a part of that yes. All right. So, in a nutshell, model the church as you see your family. The nutshell is being formed on the cornerstone. Our nutshell will be formed on the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. And that will determine our direction. That will determine our shape. So, I'd like you all to stand. I want to give opportunity this morning, because it's all exciting of what God's doing. But we're not naive to the fact that there has been hurts, whether it's in this church, another church, or whatever you've gone through, or in your life, that's prevented you from trusting. It could just be not even in church. But this altar is going to be open. If you want to bring your past hurts, you want to go, I want to start anew, or you say, you know what, I just want to come to the altar because my bones are dry, because dry bones can come alive again, and we know it. So if that is you, come to the altar. This is not about anybody else. This is about you, what God's establishing in you, what God's growing in you, what uniquely he's placed in you to be a part of. This is not about us doing as much as it is us being with God and then doing out of being with God. We don't earn our salvation through our works, but we do these works because of our salvation. And it's up to us to reach out to build this wall, to build bring stones to this wall and build this wall. It's up to us as a family to strengthen each other that the wall is so strong that we can then go out and continue building to this temple. Or if you just go, you know what, I just want to shake it off, I want to start a new, go, I know you're dealing with me. This altar is for all of that, just to lay it out and then let's start building our family. And you don't have to tell us, we'll pray for you, but you don't have to tell us what is going on but this altar is open for you. So while your eyes are closed before that, I want to give opportunity for you if you have never accepted Christ in your life or if you've walked away and you go, you know what, I want Jesus as my cornerstone. I want that in my life and I've walked away or I've never received it ever. I just come to church. 
Just place your hand on your heart and let's just pray. I see those hands. All right, let's say this together. And let's say this excitingly together because this is an exciting moment. It says, when one, the whole of heaven rejoices, right? So the whole of heaven is rejoicing right now. Yeah. Lord Jesus, say it after me. I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my life as the Lord of my life and the Saviour of my life as the cornerstone of my life, giving me direction and forming me into all you've designed for me. I thank you that you accept me into your family, that I have eternity with you. I just thank you for every single person that is here today, Father that they will find that uniqueness that you have put in each one of them, that you will help them feel a sense of family, just not in their family, but with you, that they have such a wealth of inheritance, God, that every single thing that they need, they already have through you, Jesus. You've already given it to them. So this is not a what next, this is now you've given it to them. So I thank you that each one stands in the authority of Jesus Christ right now because you already did that on the cross. You already gave victory on the cross and every blessing is theirs, all of us, in Jesus' name because of the cross. So we thank you right now that every single person that is watching, every single person that is here will know your name, that you will not only be the one that saved them, but you will be the Lord over their life. And we thank you that being the Lord over their life, they will grow, they will fruit, they will leaf, they will flower, they will fruit and they will grow. Their temple that you dwell in, in their lives, but not only their lives, that they will reach out to grow the temple of you, Jesus. And we will commit to making each member of this family stronger, that we will stand strong for the name of Jesus Christ as a cornerstone. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you go, you know what? I want to come down here and I want to pray because i got all this stuff that I just need to lay at the altar. Like I said, you don't have to give what it is. But if that is you, just come to the altar. We're going to sing a song. Are you singing Refiner? This song gets me every time. When you're singing this song, this is your life sacrifice. You're going, I want to give my life. I want to be tried by fire. That's going to hurt, right? Fire hurts. But He purifies us from the inside. It's not what we're doing on the outside. So when you're singing these words, really know what you're singing because when it comes to you in that time, know that God's going to refine you. God is molding you. He's shaping you and He's giving you direction. 